Reaching the last confession of Jeremiah, we'll hear the shocking accusation that Yahweh has seduced his prophet, and we'll be faced with some difficult interpretative decisions that involve the whole series, like where they end. Does this one end with Jeremiah singing a song of praise to Yahweh, or cursing the day he was born? Both are possible. The choice is yours. You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. The final text for this series about Jeremiah's confessions, in chapter 20, verses 7 to 13, begins with a complaint addressed to Yahweh, not about the actions of other humans or about Yahweh's own inaction, but rather that God has seduced his own prophet, verses 7 to 8. O oh Lord, you've seduced me, and I was seduced. You've overpowered me, and you've prevailed. I've become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I have to cry out. I have to shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. This develops into a sort of soliloquy, in which the prophet rehearses his reaction to these things. Verse 9. If I say, I'll not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there's something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary with holding it in, I can't, before reporting the threats that he's heard from his enemies, verse 10. For I hear many whispering, Terror's all around, denounce him, let's denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be seduced, and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. The final three verses sandwich a plea in verse 12 between two segments in which Jeremiah confesses Yahweh as his saviour. But Yahweh is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble, and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonour will never be forgotten. O Yahweh of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to Yahweh, praise Yahweh, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evil doers. So, like the two previous passages, this last one has no explicit narrative frame, unlike the first, and perhaps by its form this one fits the genre of lament psalm best. However, this very form, with its expressed addressee, Yahweh, and its quotation, verse 10, from the opponents, together with the hypothetical character of verse 9, Jeremiah's reaction, all make it only a quasi-soliloquy, with the feeling of listening to the prophet talk to himself and his God. This sense nudges the reader in a narrative direction. Jeremiah's complaint that Yahweh has seduced him is doubly ironic, for he goes on to quote the opponent's hope that he might be seduced, compare verses 7 and 10. But the biggest change as we read through this passage is more subtle. At the start of the speech, Jeremiah addresses Yahweh directly in the second person, you, even while accusing God of seduction. But by verse 9, something's changed and he's using the third person, he, and speaking about rather than to his God. This adds to the emotional power and poignancy of his confession in verse 11, and the subsequent return to second person address in verse 12. Now we've got a question. Traditional readings of the lament close with the third person him in 2013, but the text continues in verse 14 with a return to the motif of wishing never to have been born, which we saw in 1510 in an earlier confession. It might well make an appropriate if rather discouraging, ending to this one, whichever ending you think's right, and this confession or this series of confessions is nearly as much of a choose-your-own ending as the Book of Mark was. What I hope I've highlighted in this series is that these confessions are neither laments, nor complaints, nor really confessions. Rather, they tell parts of, and only parts of, the story of the turbulent relationship of Jeremiah and his God. Here in this passage, Yahweh is the seducer, according to Jeremiah. But again in this passage, Yahweh is silenced. Though, of course, in part, it's we who have silenced God by selecting only these passages to study, rather than really reading the book of Jeremiah. <laughs>